Look at the size of these two coolers. We have the Noctua NHL 12S and the even tinier or even Brontes, both of which make a perfect fit for a small form factor build or console like build, which are pretty awesome in my opinion. And I think they're absolute feats of computer engineering, but we're about to see if this can keep an 8600K overclocked at 4.8 gigahertz cool. Can it keep it cool? Can it keep it stable? Can it keep it under the thermal limit when compared to these larger CPU coolers? Of course, when it comes to heat dissipation and cooling, size does matter. Not in all cases, of course, because you do have certain trade-offs. But today, we're going to see how that plays out and get right into it. What's up everyone, my name is JD from JD Tech here. Today we've got all the coolers lined up, starting from largest to smallest. We've got the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3, the Cryorig H5, the Arctic Freezer Esports 133, the Noctua NHL 12S, and lastly, the Reven Brontes. Now the main point we're drawing here today is not whether or not low profile coolers are better than big coolers, because we know the larger coolers have a higher overhead for overclocking. Today we're seeing if these low profile coolers can keep an overclocked 8600K to 4.8 gigahertz stable when compared to the other coolers. In comparison, the NHL 12S is larger than the Brontes. In terms of size, the Bronte stands at 59 millimeters tall, 105 millimeters wide, giving it full clearance to the dim slots. The fan is 95 millimeters, so it'll be working pretty hard to move enough air to cool the 8600K. The NHL 12S, on the other hand, is 70 millimeters tall and 128 millimeters wide and has a 120 millimeter fan. This cooler does get a little friendly with the ram sticks due to its width this cooler is larger and will provide more heat dissipation but we'll have to sacrifice some clearance for it on the other hand you can reposition the fan to sit on top of the fins rather than beneath it to allow for some extra clearance this would be the case if i had all four ram slots populated but the fan position was fine for my ram configuration both the brontes and the nhl 12s have similar approaches to their cooling design both have four six millimeter heat pipes that are located beneath the contact plate both coolers have a relatively thick aluminum contact block, except the Brontes has embossed edges, while the NHL 12S has a solid design. Construction quality is outstanding for both coolers. Noctua's packaging and ease of installation is top notch. All the parts are metal. They provide a fan extension cable and a proper mounting screwdriver tool. The Brontes has solid quality parts as well, and the installation was very straightforward. But for some reason, while screwing on the mounting braces onto the cooler itself, provided screws were stripped easily as they were a pain to perfectly align. I still managed to install it though without any other hiccups besides that one. It's also worth noting that the NHL 12S does have support for AM4 mounting out of the box while the Brontes does not. You will need to order a kit for that. Now let's see how these low profile coolers compare to the rest of the lineup. For testing we're using the 8600K clocked at 4.8 gigahertz which is pretty toasty. I also used the same thermal paste and application for each test. For this test I'm using IDA64 and all attempts listed is the temperature difference between the room temperature and the CPU package temp, also known as delta T over ambient, the delta or change in temperature over ambient or room temperature. So let's head into it. The Dark Rock Pro 3 is going to be the coolest and quietest of the bunch, obviously due to its massive cooling potential. The Cryorig H5 is considerably warmer and louder by a few decibels. Surprisingly, the Freezer 33 holds up very well and proceeds to cool even more with the max fan speed curve, whereas the others were already maxed out with their stock fan configuration. Then we have the NHL 12S, which holds up very well for its size. Also, the total system noise, that's the total system noise, meaning the PSU, the GPU, all the system fans, everything, was at 45.1 decibels, which is an incredibly noise efficient result for such a small cooler and toasty setting. Lastly, we have the Brontes, which holds the 8600K steady at 67.5 degrees C over ambient, which is pretty hot. But for such a small cooler and actually keeping the chips stable, this was very surprising. Also, it remained very quiet with a total system noise output of 43.3 decibels. The fan was running pretty fast at 2,268 RPM too, so it was certainly maxed out. Now, would I recommend holding these temperatures for prolonged periods of time for the smaller coolers? No, probably not, especially for the Brontes. For the Noctua NHL 12S, yeah, you could probably do that for prolonged periods of time and your chip would be fine. But say if you need to render a file in a jiffy and you need to boost up the clock speed or something of the alike, it can get the job done and keep the chip stable. That to me is impressive by itself. Both the Noctua NHL 12S and Reven Brontes held up considerably well for their size and noise output. 
I would highly recommend both coolers for small form factor builds if you intend on doing one. These are both serious contenders. Now the Brontes and NHL 12S aren't direct competitors due to their size difference, so keep that in mind while viewing this comparison. It's more of a question on what type of space you're working with. The NHL 12S comes in at around $50 and the Brontes is around $40, both of which are very worth money in my opinion. Which one you want is up to your clearance specification and what kind of small form factor build you're working with. I hope you all enjoyed the comparison let me know if you want to see more small form factor type comparisons and topics to cover. I find it extremely interesting what type of efficiency can be squeezed out of mini PC parts. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. Thank you all for watching and I will catch you in the next one.